Let's start project. Agent Lang, why exactly is an Interpol agent involved with this clearly domestic case? That's none of your business, Mr. Prosecutor. How is it not? I've heard a rumor or two about you. You solved a murder that occurred during your flight home recently, right? Ha! Huh. But you sure took a while just to arrest one little flight attendant. How pathetic. You prick! How dare you say that about Mr. Edgeworth! Are you saying you could have solved it faster, pal? The comedic relief jumps to the aid of his master. How cliche. Look, what I'm getting at is that if I had been there, no one would have died. <clears throat> I would have solved the entire case and Agent Hicks would still be with us here today. Agent Lang knew yesterday's victim, Agent Ockby Hicks. Hicks was like a brother to me, so now I'm out to take my revenge. Agent Hicks was investigating a smuggling ring with Francisca in a third person. This must be the man she was talking about. In that case, you should understand how I feel as the kidnapped is someone I know. So I ask that you please allow me to participate in the investigation. Not so fast! This isn't your neatly trimmed courtroom of Eden, you know. You're out in the wilderness now, Mr. Prosecutor, and way out of your league. No hard feelings, but why don't you go back to your precious courtroom now, pretty boy? Pretty boy? Strong words for someone showing off that much chest! I do, and I don't need the help of a filthy prosecutor. Sorry, but the truth doesn't need the likes of you to distort it today. Who uses the adjective filthy to describe a prosecutor? And why? Why do I feel such intense loathing emanating from him? <laughs> oh my god. Hang on! We beat the Sandoras! Uh, uh, Sir Lavitz. Watch out for the dragon's breath. Th this is... <sighs> we will wreck your revenge upon them. Damn it. We were too late to do anything here. I I'm, s I'm sorry, Lavitz. I want you both to promise me. Whatever powers you have, you better the hell use it to make that dragon pay! Uh, oh. I want to see him suffer for every one of my comrades who's died here! Yeah. You have my word. This is our duty to prevent tragedies like this from happening again. Um... The girl I spoke to earlier raises her hand. Uh, I've always assumed that the stronger version of water is ice. A common misconception. Ice is in fact a much more complex magic spell. It's something we call combination magic or combo magic because it involves more than one trait. To cast ice, you have to combine water, which is based on intelligence, and freeze, which is based on courage. I erase the blackboard and write the magic formula of ice. As you can see from the formula, there are two invocations that are combined to cast the spell. Oh, and nullify is just the opposite of amplify, if you were wondering. It makes something become less. Some of the freshmen look confused. Well guys, no pain, no gain. If this formula looks complicated, take a look at this. If you wanted to make your ice spell even stronger, or if ice storm wasn't good enough for you, there's always blizzard. The freshmen look grim as I put down the chalk. Some of them might be having second thoughts about taking magical science as their major. Don't panic. It's really not that complicated once you understand the basics. Name and occupation. 
Dr. Herman Crap. <coughs> Sniper, stay in there! And who is that cute little creature? Hmm, such a restless bird. Quite unlike Tucker. Wow, chalk one up for Taka. He shut Sniper up with a single sound. Son of a gun. Dr. Herman Crab, Ship Shape Aquarium's veterinarian. And could you tell us the name of your cute little friend there as well? You're on her, please focus on the case. But it's important to learn all we can about the witness. This is Sniper. She's the offspring of a penguin named Rifle. Sniper lives in my hair. I can't believe this is actually happening right now. She might cause a commotion now and then, but please try to ignore her. I'm soon in front of my door, but I'm intercepted by the sudden appearance of Kenji, who appears to be carrying a stack of books. Hey man, give me a hand, would you? Uh-huh. The books are unceremoniously dumped into my arms as Kenji fumbles with his room key. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. If you were around, I'd have to keep my door unlocked, and that's just begging for trouble. The perfect opportunity to set up an ambush, or maybe just plant a bomb if they don't want to get their hands dirty. Mm, probably don't. Afraid they'll have to break a nail or something if they have to stab me. <laughs> Women! My mind thinks about digesting the verbal torrent that's just been unleashed, but elects to remain comfortably in the dark. Uh huh. Anyway, where have you been, man? I could have used some help carrying these back from the library. I knocked on your door, but you weren't there! Oh, sorry. Not really. You appear to think I'm some kind of pack mule. I was out with Emmy and Rin. Kenji staggers back in shock. It looks like I just shot his dog. You know, if he had a dog. The Linless Ladies AGAIN?! What'd you do this time? Well, we wound up at the Shanghai. I'm prevented from continuing by a sudden exclamation of despair. The Shanghai? Why the Shanghai? No, 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 man! You can't just go to the damn Shanghai! It's the most dangerous place in the city! A veritable stronghold of their best agents! I know! I met them! They'll stop at nothing to lull you into a false sense of security, and then He hits bam! his door for emphasis. Wallet's gone. Bus pass, gone. Identity, fucking gone, man. Promise me you won't go there again. He seems so vehemently opposed to the idea of the Shanghai that I'm willing to lie a little in order to get into my room. Sure, I won't go there again. Or at least I won't ever tell you I've gone there again. 
This seems to mollify my bespectacled companion. Good, good. Sorry to come on, Zostron, but I know the danger there too well to let you just wander into the lion's den again. You got out there alive once, but twice is pushing it. They walked slowly past the row of crates until they came to the coffin. They stopped and nodded to one another, and Junpei put his hand on the lid of the coffin. M m m mommy! Just kidding. He smirked heartily at his own joke. Junpei grumbled and shook his head. Whatever. Just open it. Junpei resisted the urge to remind Santa that he would have had it open a long time ago if Santa hadn't interrupted, and quickly threw off the lid of the coffin. They peered inside. Contrary to what they'd expected, the inside of the coffin was quite large. It was mostly empty, but not completely so. Laying on the bottom was a rusty key. And next to the key... It's a gun. Yeah. I'm not sure how to navigate Yamaku's library yet, having mostly stuck to books I brought with me, so I search for the librarian to ask for help. Hmm. I suppose she's Can't not a rat. That. Yuko, looking rather distracted, suddenly emerges from one of the aisles. Uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, can I help you? Actually, I was looking for a book. So am I. Advanced cryptography. We just got it in, but it's gone missing. Oh, motherfucking Kenji! Nine. Like the numbers on every other door, this one too was a rough shape made of red paint. Its door was set into the back wall of the room. Junpei leapt toward it with a sudden burst of hopeful energy. It was a large double door, heavy and full of solemn importance. He grabbed hold of the door handle and shook. Nothing, but he hadn't expected it to open. The red set on the wall next to the door. Its screen read vacant. Finally, they'd found it. Junpei felt himself overwhelmed by a torrent of emotion. At last, they'd found the exit, but cold gripped his heart, and he knew all too well why, as he stood frozen, unsure of what to think or feel. Junpei! Look! Behind you! He spun around, and couldn't believe what he saw. It was a door, with the number 9 written across it. Was there... a second door? Why? Junpei's voice was barely audible. Even to himself, he stumbled toward the second door, as if somehow compelled. It was a small single door. It sat in the starboard corner of the room, on the same wall as the door they'd enter from, but in the opposite corner. Nine. There was no mistaking it. A red sat on the wall next to the door as well. Junpei shook the door handle pointlessly and muttered to himself. Why? Why the hell are there two doors? As you approach, they do their guardly thing, and they're like, Who are you? Who goes there? That kind of thing, so. What would you like to say to them? So, Nars, um, oh boy. slowly <laughs> walks up to them, oh and God. sort of, like, walks around them to see if there's anything, like, in their pockets or anything <laughs> like that. Oh, oh, this is a face palm. I will may chance slap all of you. Everyone they, face palms. They, they, they see you immediately. Like, you're, I'm not even gonna have you roll. They see you do it. Like, their backs are up against a fence. Yeah. They, see, they see you approach. If you try to come from the side, he's gonna be like, what are you, what are, what are, 
Okay. Get your okay. hands. What are you doing? Okay. Hmm. And how do you intend to prove the orca witnessed the murder? <laughs> what are you going to do? Put the orca on the stand and cross-examine her? This is a critical point. I better think about it carefully. The defense will... Well, it worked with parents before, so why not? If we brought Orla to the witness stand, I'm sure she would tell me everything! Really? How oh, interesting. And how do you propose to communicate with the Orca? Well, I'd... I'd... I'd use my lawyer powers. Unlike some birds, an Orca is incapable of human speech. And no, I'm afraid I cannot allow you to cross-examine a creature that cannot speak. Unless the defense has some other way of communicating with the Orca. No, I'm afraid I don't, Your Honor. Parrots speak and orcas don't. I forgot about that. I'm so stupid. And just like that, Mugro Ikusaba's class trial drew to an end. Was Kirigiri really innocent? Or that was a question that would never be answered. And I stopped searching for the answer. Thus concluded Mukuro Ikusaba's class trial. Our final class trial. After that, no one else was murdered in Hold Speak Academy. And we obtained peace. At the cost of everyone else's lives. Peace. Inside the Academy. Peace. Amongst ourselves, that was our hope. Our hope. 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 This. Oh yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's definitely, I'm, I'm up for a challenge. I mean, first we have groups of soldiers that don't change their tactics, and then we got dancing mushrooms. Just from personal experience, I really wouldn't suggest eating them. Personal experience. But have you tried? We all have around here. Oh. You get bored out here, you know? Like, how do they taste? Did, did, did... Did you kill them first, or did you eat them while they were dancing? I'm curious. Well, of course we killed them, then we ate them, and then things got weird. Are they sentient? I don't know. I just know that there were some pretty bad hallucinations after we ate them. Oh, okay. I get ya. Hey, Franz! Well, here comes an outlier. I turn in the direction of the cheerful female voice. Franz, where have you been? I thought you didn't have classes in the afternoon today. I know I said I'm not that close to most students here, but there are exceptions. Hi, Aretha. Have you been looking for me? This is Aretha Blyton. Yes, Franz. I was looking everywhere for you. I was dying to see you. She is not my girlfriend. Don't worry, love. I'm here for you now. I repeat, not my girlfriend. So, where have you been? Around. Where have you been looking? The cafeteria. And? Just the cafeteria. You were just having your afternoon tea. 
Pingo, you know me so well, don't you? <laughs> You're just easy to read. <laughs> Aretha has this particular way of laughing her heart out that's just pleasant to watch. It makes you want to laugh along with her. We start walking. I was teaching a class. Professor Poe asked me to fill in for him. Whoa, cool. It's really not that exciting. <laughs> Are you sure? I bet you were checking out the girls. Does that mean she really is the murderer? Or does that mean there's more than meets the eye to what she was saying earlier? If I am executed here for this, then the truth about this academy will never come to light. I will not let that happen, no matter what. This is all a trap set by the Puppet Master. A trap set by the Puppet Master? It's the Puppet Master setting Kiri Giri up to take the fall for Muguro Ikusaba's murder? But what if, what if I'm wrong about that? What happens then? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to? A trap set by the Puppet Master? The victim is Muguro Ikusaba? Did Kiri Kiri kill her? What does Kiri Kiri know? What am I supposed to do? Kiri Kiri is lying. And only I know the truth. The only person who can call her out is me. Who is right? What am I supposed to do? A trap set by the Puppet Master. If we want to accomplish anything, risk is unavoidable. I'm well aware of the danger, but if we want answers, we must push forward. Am I wrong? What am I supposed to do? I have to decide, here and now. Do I call Kiri Kiri out on her lie? Damn it. I have to. There's only one way. There is a way to skip the task, but I doubt anyone will try it. It's a luck-based game, and losing means you forfeit not only this task points, but yesterday's as well. There's only a 1% chance of success, and... I'll do it. The hell you will! I'm not letting you throw away our chance to earn points! <sighs> Mr. Bandages has a point. Maybe we should see what the task is like before you make a decision. Fine. The task requires the four of you to collect certain objects from around the mansion. That doesn't sound so bad. A state, that is. Oh, the whole estate? Yes, and the servants are not allowed to speak to you during this time. This task has a time limit of one hour, and the rooms the items are located in are booby-trapped. <sighs> Someone pissed Eric off, didn't they? Is this task even possible to complete? Depending on where the items are, it might be possible. But it'd take a lot of work, and I'm not sure Mr. Bandages could. I'm fine! I can do this! That's what you say, but your body seems to disagree. Not like it matters. I'm taking the luck game. But that's a 1% chance. Are you sure you want to? Well, I'd love to say go for it. I have to acknowledge that the odds are against you. Trust me on this. You can't be serious! This is preposterous! Be sensible! Ugh, sometimes being sensible isn't sensible. That doesn't even make any sense! Look, you're in no condition to go running around the estate. And what happens if you end up needing medical help because the exertion makes your condition worse? You can't win the game if you can't even play it. <sighs> he turned to Mr. Wolf and the Count. You guys can't let her! I actually think she has a valid point. Me too. I'd rather forfeit some points than risk your health. What, do you guys care about me now? Looks like you've been outvoted. Deja vu? <sighs> so, you're really going with the luck game? Yes. Don't say I didn't warn you. 
I won't. He pulled out a small device from his coat and placed it on the table. This machine will generate a number from 1 to 100. If you guess the right number, your team gets 5 points. Okay. What's your number? 28. The man starts the device. I don't believe it. What? What happened? See for yourself. He pushed the device closer to us. It chose my number! Detective Gumshoe, may I ask what in the world that is? Well, that's... um... Count off! Uno! Dos! Cuatro! Cinco! Ocho! Noventa y ocho! Noventa duimi! Shifu! All 99 members are here and accounted for, sir! <laughs> what the heck do you think you're doing, counting my cubs off like that? Every person is a valuable human being, you get me? And everyone is a name that their parents gave to them. No one is a two or a three. Everyone, regardless of age or rank, is number one. Got it? Um. What are your Jam thoughts? Jamor suggests to Ravel that uh, he sends his servants to collect the money. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, cool. Okay, so they tell you where they're gonna be, which is just a shop right over here on the green section. So if I could zoom in more, it'd be a little better. But must be nice to own <laughs> human lives, Dragon. <laughs> I don't. I don't own them. They're just under my command. <laughs> that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it came out being the exact same thing. Like, are you sure? Uh I don't mind... staying. June's body betrayed her true feelings. Her eyes were wet with the beginnings of tears, and her legs shook. It's okay. There's no way we'd leave you behind. Santa had said what Junpei had known the moment he realized which three people could go through the door. Besides, I'd rather drown at the bottom of the ocean than escape with this sausage fest. Maybe I'll get to go to Atlanta. Uh, are you sure you don't mean Atlantis? The... Uh, oh, right. <laughs> Perhaps it was the sudden reassurances that no one wanted to leave Jun behind, but Junpei laughed harder than he had in some time. Santa and Ace smiled. You guys... June blinked tears from her eyes and bit her lip. She didn't seem to know what else to say. Very well. Best we head back to Sea Deck, then. We should be able to take the elevator we passed earlier. Perhaps Clover, Seven, and Lotus will have returned from Door 1. Even as Ace spoke, they knew finding the others wouldn't improve the situation. There was no way they could be splendid teams that could both go through the doors. Ace knew it. They all knew it. <laughs> Pool water would never be drained unless the pool was being cleaned, huh? I don't know about that, I was just there yesterday and I have a picture for that. I have a picture for that! No, boss! Well, the evidence is right here, the opportunity's too perfect, Athena. Now's the time to strike! Objection! Let me guess, strike one for me? Strike one for you. <laughs> Great job, boss. I don't know, Athena. I can't help but feel that we're on to something here. We have a picture of a divided pool that shows that the water doesn't have to be drained to be cleaned. I have to present this photo somehow. There's nothing wrong with that statement, though. It's Objection! still... Early. Mr. Wright, you can't jump the gun like this. Okay. I'll press! I'll press! Too... early. The power of youth wins. I'll press. Oh boy, two more guards! Because, you know, that worked so well the last time. Yeah. How many people do you think could fit across on this bridge anyway? Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the bridge looked a lot smaller before this battle. Well, let's see. 
given the general shape and size, the construction is kind of swamp. Uh, no! Hey, just because I know about math and you can't add two and two doesn't make me a nerd. Ah, I can add two and two. It's four. Duh. I'm impressed. I'm not. <laughs> I like her already. <sighs> oh, my God. I balanced the tray on one hand and knocked on the door. What? Breakfast. I don't want it. Go away. You need to eat. What I need is for people to stop treating me like an invalid. Honestly, it's like everyone in this place has lost their minds. I'm more worried about catching whatever insanity seems to be going around than my cold. <sighs> I was worried about this guy. I pushed the door open, walked into the room, and slammed the tray down onto his bedside table. Eat your damn food! What is this? Food. It looks... odd. It'll help you feel better. I'm not even sure why I bothered. I'm not sure why you did either. <sighs> you are worse than Mira when she's sick, and that's saying something. She's practically a demon. Mira? My best friend. You call your best friend a demon? Only when she's sick. Right. She doesn't mind. She even finds it funny. She can be a lot to deal with, but I'd never treat her for anyone else. She's impulsive, outgoing, pretty blunt, but her heart's in the right place. I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. And don't think for a moment that you've managed to distract me. I didn't carry this tray all the way here for nothing. You will eat this food, even if I have to shove it down your throat. You're not going to poison me, are you? Trust me. If I wanted to kill you, I wouldn't use food to do it. True. You'd probably be afraid that you wouldn't be able to resist eating the poison food. Hey! I have some self-control! I'll believe that when I see it. He took a tentative bite of the food and chewed it slowly before speaking. It's not bad. Thank you. Why are... did you make this? Yep. Why? It's kind of my fault, you're... It's not kind of. It's entirely your fault. So, since you're in magical engineering, I guess your final year project is related to magic machines? Aretha's eyes seem to sparkle at the mention of her final project. Of course. I already have a title for it. Application of Binary Logic and Arithmetic in Magic Machines. Wha... what? Application of Binary Logic and Arithmetic in Magic Machines. She recited the title in a single breath. Yeah, I heard you the first time, but... What the heck is that? You don't understand? I thought you were the smart one. I understand the words, but to me that sounds like you're trying to get a magic machine to do math. Bingo! You're the first person to guess it right away, Franz. Aretha is beaming. Apparently she's proud of this idea. Aretha, that's... preposterous. It is not! And look who's talking! Aretha is right to call me out. The topic Professor Poe convinced me to undertake is even sillier than magical math. I guess we're in the same boat, sort of. So, which professor forced you into this? Oh, no, no, you must understand. I chose that topic myself. Uh... Aretha, we truly are star-crossed. You've committed the academic equivalent of a suicide by choosing your hopeless topic, whereas I'm about to be murdered by mine. We'll be factory workers within a year. Do you guys mm -hmm. all see that? Yeah. Oh, what? Wow, it looks like a shitty town. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's uh, like a is that is that like a really zoomed out drawing? Yes, if you go click on oh. the um, magnifying glass, it should zoom out, it should zoom in for you. I'll be honest, I saw that a week ago. I had no idea what the hell it was. <laughs> Whoever made yeah. this map was a so... jerk. <laughs> well actually now that now that I know those black dots are like houses, this is actually yeah, pretty, that's cool. pretty cool. So I, I, so before you start, could you please not insult me as a map maker, please? I'm, I'm not insulting your map maker, I just, I didn't get it. <laughs> it's okay, okay. it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. Guys. Anyway. I understand, actually it's very good. I like it, I understand it. I'm okay, sorry. So... <laughs> 
Officer Meekins, why are you standing here wasting time? Sir! Because I'm not a police officer right now, sir! I'm the Blue Badger! And I'm creating memories and dreams for the kids! That's never a waste of time, sir! I have a dream to become as big as Detective Gumshoe, sir! I was patrolling the scorchingly boring beat until a little while ago. When the dispatch radio on my shoulder crackled that the kidnappers had escaped, sir! I thought maybe this was my shot at making detective, sir! I rushed on over to join in, but when I got here, there was a sea of people already! And I couldn't spread my trademark friendliness and joy onto anyone! It would seem that some people never change. So why exactly are you in that ridiculous outfit? Sir! That's because, sir! I'm here to keep the visitors in good spirits, sir! But it's also to hide the fact that I'm an officer on the trail of the kidnapper, sir! I see. Agent Lang is very wise to employ this sort of diversionary tactics. To be handed the role of the Blue Badger out of all the different disguises, sir! It's... It's such an honor! I'm a little blurry-eyed, and it feels like it takes me longer than usual to get dressed and down to the track. A glance at my watch reveals that I was right, and I am in fact running a little late. The thing is... There's no Emmy. That's odd. She should be here. She definitely should be here. I mean, I was late! I guess I wasn't the only one who had trouble getting up this morning. The thought crosses my mind that it never quite stopped raining yesterday. Did she go running anyway? It seems likely. Emmy's a lot of things, but cautious isn't one of them. She probably figured the rain wouldn't stop, and that's why she was so adamant about running alone. Still, I would have gladly run with her, even if it was in the rain. Heck, if anything, I would have been able to convince her to come in once it got really bad. That would be why she didn't want me along, of course. Even so, I can't help wanting to know where she is. Well, nothing for it. I better stretch and run and hope that Emmy shows up with a grin and an excuse. On my cooldown lap, I'm forced to admit that Emmy isn't showing up. Furthermore, I have no idea where she is. Anxiety gnaws at me while at the same time I wonder just why I'm so worried over her. The run helped to take my mind off it for a little while, but now that I'm finished, I'm back to worrying. It was weird not having her here. Downright unnerving. It suddenly dawns on me that I've been running to hang out with Emmy as much as I've been running to stay healthy. Probably more to be with Emmy now that I think of it. It's one of those things that's completely obvious, yet somehow I never realized it. She really is someone I enjoy being with. As revelations go, it's hardly world-shaking. All the same, I find myself feeling slightly shocked. When did this happen? Well, no time to think about this. Though I want to ponder this new development, I have a greater desire to find out what's happened to Amy. I'll ask the nurse when I stop to see him. Their feathers are fair, their beaks are endearing. It's hard to decide for who you'll be cheering. For all you shoujo manga pigeon loving nerds, let's dub is going to the birds. When's the next ace attorney? Fucking say that again. When's the. Oh my god, you just shot my spleen out! Who else wants to be clever? The improv is great. The actors are charming. But sexing up birds is somewhat alarming. And more distressing than the raging Mongol herds. Let's dub is going to, going to, going to. Let's dub is going. 